Good day, my name is Melanie from Mark. I am the Content and Product Executive at Future Managers. And it's my pleasure to be able to share our presentation to you today around our new curriculum. Let's start by just acknowledging as lecturers uh, the important role that you play in the lives of students and the impact that you have on your students. We hope that some of what we share today helps you enhance what you do in your classrooms on a daily basis. Often, I think we feel that we're like the little hamster on the wheel. The TVET sector is a very demanding sector. There are a lot of um, changes in the sector. And as lecturers, we've got to keep up to date and abreast with those changes, with the revised curriculum, as well as giving our students of our very best. It is important as a lecturer for you to be able to take care of yourself, your own mental health well-being, so that you are able to be there for your students. One of the products that we have, um, we've just introduced recently, is a wonderful book by Dr. Edna Roos around uh, looking at how we look at stress as a lecturer or as a teacher and how do you overcome that stress, whether you're in a pandemic or not. The book has some wonderful tips on how to deal with remote teaching, how to deal with coming back into the classroom with face-to-face -face teaching, how to deal with change. There's a wonderful chapter on mindfulness, which helps us just take a step back and remember what it is to breathe and be grounded in the moment. This book is available for purchase from Future Managers. Um, you can email info at futuremanagers.com and the book is 350 Rand, a very valuable resource for lecturers. You can use it with your students, you can use it for yourselves, you can use it with your families, with your own children and definitely something to be um, used as a stress reliever and giving you those skills to be able to deal with the stress that we find in our daily interactions in our classrooms. There's a quick video I'd like to show you. Have a look at this.
something important to remember as lecturers. We can so easily label our students. We can so easily label ourselves. We can so easily label our colleagues. Uh, you are all incredibly gifted people. You give so much of yourselves. So just a little reminder about making sure that you are well <clears throat> and that you are looking after yourselves. Let's just take a pause for a minute. And uh, some of what is taught in Dr. Ruth's book is around breathing and mindfulness. And I'd like to just for us to take a minute and just uh, breathe and relax. Follow my prompt. Wherever you're sitting, close your eyes, let your hands hang next to you. And when I say take a deep breath in, take a deep breath in and hold it, and then I'll tell you when to exhale. Are you ready? Here we go. Take a deep breath in, hold it, and exhale. Take a deep breath in. Hold it and exhale. Shake your arms a little, squeeze your fists, clench your fists, unclench them, roll your shoulders, and take another deep breath in and exhale. Remember to look after yourselves as lecturers. All right, let's move on to the content. So we're going to talk about three specific subjects today, and this is N5 Catering Theory and Practical, N5 Computerized Financial Systems, and N5 Entrepreneurship and Business Management. These are all revised syllabi and are all for implementation in July 2022. In other words, semester two that is around the corner. Just to have a quick look at catering theory and prac, and uh, this particular slide speaks to the weightings of the various modules. And I think it's really important to highlight, particularly the flower module, which has a very high weighting, as well as the pastries um, module as well. And what is here is just is to allow you or to help you and guide you in planning your teaching time and obviously setting up your pace setter. So please note as well that uh, the exams will also be set away according to these weightings. So obviously in the exam paper, you're going to have a higher weighting for the flower module than um, one of the other smaller modules. So just touching on the semester mark, so remember that these are all clearly indicated in the DHE syllabus, and this will be uh, available on the DHET site when the syllabus is loaded by the DHET. Uh, just a reminder that publishers, we are not allowed to share that syllabus. The DHET will post the final syllabus on the website. So important here, obviously, the theoretical component as well as the practical component. On the next slide, um, this one speaks specifically to the practical component. And let's just pause here for a second. Remember, you need to plan your practical based on your context in your college. So you will do one practical at the end of the semester before the final written exam begins, and the following dishes will be prepared. Flour and pastry, meat and sauce or glaze, shoe pastry or souffles and puddings and a soup. The candidate will be given three hours to complete the, the above dishes and obviously this is with planning with the lecturers and again in the context of your college as per your your particular needs the general aims of this subject is to prepare students adequately with theoretical knowledge and practical skills to be able to um, obviously operate as a caterer in the hospitality industry the specific aims um, and what's important to highlight here is they speak here about attitude and I think this is very important um, for students. It's important that they understand they are going into a highly demanding um, industry and do they have the right attitude? They talk about um, all the different terms and obviously HACCP is emphasized throughout the modules um, looking at the various safety, um, 
safety protocol. So if we look at the specific aims here with um, the carcass structure and cooking methods, um, this is now obviously for the meat section, um, technology in cutting, um, looking at carving and serving of meat, and all the different types of yeast, general preparation, etc., and the char characteristics and the faults of bread, different flour mixtures, mixing and cooking methods. And there is also an emphasis on where there are ways in which to rectify when there is a, a mistake. So please make sure that you look at the syllabus and the textbook clearly indicates this as well. I think what is important to note also at this point is that remember the textbook is written to the syllabus. At Future Managers, we really um, stick to the syllabus that we are given by the DHET to ensure that we cover all the learning outcomes. But remember, the syllabus is the, the guiding document. Um, and that's where you should do your planning. But you will see that in the textbook, the syllabus is clearly covered in all of the various headings. It's also about preparing students for industry and making sure that they are ready for industry. Uh, practical exposure during the program, either between N4 and N5 or between N5 and N6 is very important. And it's important also to debrief students when they come back from their industry visits so that they know what their expectations are and what um, they are going to be exposed to as they go into industry. So this particular slide speaks to the old and the new. And again, like I did mention, there's a specific focus on flour and related products. And there's also a wider emphasis on different baking methods. This obviously does allow for a greater variety of practicals and recipes. And I do want to just um, highlight that there is a downloadable recipe book. And when the QR codes are explained to you later, in the live presentation by Clint and Faith, you will also be able to see how you can download the recipe book for free and obviously use that with your students. So that would be on the microsite or the QR code that is in the textbook and that will be demonstrated a little bit later in the workshop. So module one, stocks and suits. Um, so those are the learning outcomes there briefly describe culinary terms, obviously list and identify the different types of stock, um, outline, demonstrate and apply correct skills and techniques in preparing and cooking methods, identify food systems, um, outline and apply the correct process in cooling, heating and storing of stocks and suits, obviously following all the HACCP principles, and identify and demonstrate the correct techniques in finishing and serving foods. Sources and glazes, a bit more emphasis here than there was before um, about uh, looking at the culinary and cooking terms found in the preparation and cooking of sources and glazes, looking at the functions of those, um, looking at the different types of sources and glazes, obviously looking very carefully at thickening agents as part of this module, and again here identifying the food systems and identifying the characteristics, faults and causes and solutions, obviously when cooking sauces and glazes. Large meat cuts. So this is defining and distinguishing the different terms in preparation and cooking of meat. Identify and discuss the characteristics of the different parts of the carcass and apply the correct preparation techniques. Um, and there they speak about um, cutting, they talk about trimming, carving, smoking, drying, etc. And explain and demonstrate the cooking methods and the uses of different meats cuts. And again, the physical food systems and explaining the demonstration of the correct serving methods and obviously the portions of meat. At this point, I just want to also highlight when you go onto the QR code in the textbook, it will also take you to the microsite and on the microsite, there are some wonderful posters, particularly around um, how carcasses are cut and the different um, cuts of meat. 
to is a poster for lamb, there's a poster for pork, and there's a poster for beef. Um, you can order these um, as hard copies and use them in your classroom as a visual aid, or you can obviously download them um, from the microsite as well. Module four, flower, an important module, particularly like I mentioned at the beginning, around the weighting of that module. And um, here there's also a specific reference to alternatives. Um, I think we live in a, a world where there's so many alternatives at the moment. Um, you've got allergens and gluten intolerance, which seems to be prevalent. Um, you might have students with celiac disease, where they are obviously susceptible or, or intolerant of gluten. And they talk about the different kinds of new products also available. Um, if you think of what's available in terms of milk at the moment, you get soya milk, rice milk, oat milk, coconut milk, all kinds of milk. And um, consumers have a much wider range and choice of allergen products. The yeast module, um, obviously techniques are very important in this module as well as ratios. And again, looking at how to rectify problems or what are the causes of problems, obviously, when baking with yeast. Pastries and crusts, um, again, the different culinary terms. And again, ratio is important. HACCP again emphasized this uh, module lends itself really well to a diverse selection for a practical application. And you can really link this one nicely to um, a practical activity, link it to some kind of entrepreneurial endeavor, um, a market day where they're selling pastries. It's a good way to integrate perhaps with the business studies department as well in getting students to work together. Module seven, shoe pastry. Uh, again, looking at the different culinary terms and explaining the different ingredients used in shoe pastry and as well as the different variants of shoe pastry and explaining the characteristics and again, the faults that may occur when um, preparing shoe pastry and applying the correct techniques of finishing, decorating and storing of shoe pastry products. Module eight, puddings and souffles. Uh, again, an emphasis on the correct kinds of terms. And this is, uh, you know, there is a high level of skill uh, with souffles and hot, and hot souffles and puddings. And it might also be a good idea at this point to invite a guest lecturer to come and do a demonstration for students. Module nine looks at stock control and receiving. So this is the theory and sort of the admin part of the syllabus and looks at hospitality holistically. So this gives students those additional skills that would help them um, if they're not quite in the kitchen, they might be front of house. And this would then give them that well-rounded um, training in terms of the administrative part. Uh, this also gives students an opportunity to expand their thinking a little bit. Um, it might only, it might not be about being in the kitchen. There might be other opportunities for the students. So those are the modules. Let's just quickly look at the special features aligned with this new curriculum. A really good, clear, colourful um, explanation, lots and lots of practical activities. In, um, if you were at one of the workshops, you would have received a lecturer guide, a student book and a study guide, as well as the workbook. Remember as well, there's a downloadable recipe book, as well as question papers and other support materials. In the student book, there's also a glossary of terminology. And the workbook is a very valuable resource, particularly for independent learning. We will get, take some questions and answers at the end of the presentation. So please jot down your questions. And uh, for those who are listening to this online, we will give you some contact emails at the end of the presentation so that you can contact us if you have any questions and answers. So let's move on to computerized financial systems. Again, uh, implementation in July 2022. And at this point, I do just want to thank the authors, um, particularly uh, the authors for computerized financial systems, who have provided us with 
this um, wonderful resource that we can able to share with you today in terms of these presentations. Uh, just to also indicate that these presentations will all be available on our website um, for you to download and to refer back to, um, even particularly for those staff members who weren't able to be at the workshops or to those who were not able to connect virtually. So let's look at financial computerized financial systems in five for implementation in July 2022. So the weightings of the various modules, so the seven modules, and then looking specifically at um, financial reporting and budgets, modules six and seven, those are your heavily weighted modules. There seems to be quite a bit of change here where there are items that have come out of N5, out of N6 into N5, and obviously the N6 syllabus for computerized financial systems is currently being revised. And as soon as that syllabus um, has been finalized, publishers are going to start, well, um, producing the textbook, and the N6 syllabus will then be implemented in January of 2023, in other words, semester one, of 2023. So again, a reminder of the semester mark. Um, remember there's the assignment and the practical project and then obviously the practical exam and the test and all of this is outlined in the ICAS um, document from the DHET, the exam instructions and this can all be found on the DHET's website at www.dhet.gov.za. Right, so if we talk about the general aims for computerized financial systems, this is specifically about making sure the students are prepared for the world of work. If we look at the three subjects that we're presenting today, if we look at computerized financial systems, catering theory and prep, and the EBM 5, all three subjects have a practical component, a component that students must be able to apply in a work situation, a world of work, a real life situation. Remember the aim is for students to be productive in a job and to obviously be able to execute accounting functions in modern computer directed trends um, linked to accounting. So if we look at the old and the new syllabus, you will see that there are quite a few changes. So um, the new syllabus on the Right hand side indicates all the new modules um, compared to the old syllabus. So you will see that there is some change there. Module one speaks to mastering a spreadsheet program and obviously looking at the function of a spreadsheet and the use of a spreadsheet manual and the help functions and obviously applying spreadsheet commands. And the didactic output for this particular module is there in bold at the bottom of the slide. Students must understand that processing of information with the aid of a spreadsheet program will consist mainly of input, editing, and utilization of text and figures to create a document that can serve as a communication tool. Module two speaks about financial accounting applications um, with a breakdown in stock keeping as well as inventory and students must be able to demonstrate the knowledge of different methods of industry evaluation by means of recording information on a spreadsheet and students must be able to use relevant formulas on a spreadsheet. So this again speaks to Excel expertise and students must be very proficient in the use of Excel. Financial statement applications. Again, students would have to draw up statements of comprehensive income they have to draw up statements of financial position. Um, they would also have to draw up a cash flow statement. And this module must be evaluated practically, obviously with students um, being able to complete these activities. The textbook has a number of activities and we'll talk about the specific, um, the specific features of the new textbook when we get to that particular slide. The module four speaks to basic cost and management accounting applications. And again, here, this module must be evaluated practically. It might be a good idea to 
have um, a guest lecturer at this point to come in, you know, someone from industry who's able to come and explain to students their particular approach. Um, it could also be that you can organize a visit to industry, to a manufacturing company. Um, if you do have um, businesses that are close to your campus, you can even walk there. So it really is about trying to find ways to show students how these terminology, or how this terminology and how this theory applies to practice. Module five speaks to the interpretation and analysis and interpretation of financial statements. And this is a high level skill. Uh, it's not only about the content. So students really need to be guided here in making sure that they have those skills to um, analyze statements. Um, a good suggestion for this particular module is to put the students into groups of varying abilities and have them pair up and work with each other. Peer assisted learning is a great way of um, gathering knowledge as well. Students must be able to compare two consecutive financial statements and interpret those financial statements. Module six, financial report, uh, financial reports. So again, modules six and seven are the two most important modules in terms of the weighting. And uh, students should be able to set up parameters from a set of accounts with general ledger accounts for the financial reports. Module seven speaks to um, budgets and PASL partner is indicated on the revised syllabus in terms of an accounting package and students must obviously be able to be a fair with this. this. This particular, with module six and seven, these are the two most heavily weighted um, modules, which means that there would be a considerable emphasis on this in the exams. Just a point to make at this point that all of these subjects are new or revised, so they aren't old exam papers to refer to, but please visit our website for past papers where you can obviously pull particular questions from those papers. You will see that there is an exemplar paper in the um, study guide, which the authors have drawn up, but obviously we don't have any DHET final papers as reference yet until the first round of exams in November of this year, 2022. The special features aligned with this book um, with this new curriculum. So there are clear explanations, lots of working examples and practical activities. There are summative assessments at the end of each module to um, assist students in mastering the content. There are keywords, there are screenshots, there are lots of diagrams and tables to be able to give a visual um, explanation as well as previous and updated exam question papers but you'll, we'll talk about that a little bit um, later on in your workshop when you are shown the QR sites, um, the microsites and our website. Again, if there are any questions relating to CFS5, if you can just uh, hang on to them, we will be ask, having an opportunity at the end of the workshop for anyone who wants to ask a question, or if you want to email us and ask us any questions. Okay, so let us go on to EBM5, Entrepreneurship and Business Management in 5. Again, please note that these are all um, for implementation in July 2022 for semester two of this academic year, 2022. And take note that for all three of these subjects, there is um, an N6 revision that is being um, currently finalized, and that will be for implementation in January 2023, in other words, semester one of 2023. And that means that um, we will obviously be showing um, sample copies and promotional copies of that, those N6 versions of all three of the subjects that we're talking about today in um, October, November, depending on the timelines from the DHE team. Maybe at this point, I can just quickly talk about the submission process when there is a new textbook. So
So the DHET uh, ha has a call to publishers. Uh, there is a revised syllabus, and you need to obviously indicate your willingness as a publisher to provide content for that revised syllabus. And um, obviously, we've put our hand up for all three of these subjects as they are core subjects within our product range. We then develop the product, the student book, the lecturer guide, and the study guide um, as per the DHET syllabus that is provided to us. And that the book then goes to the DHET for submission. There are a number of screeners who then look at the book, and there are three particular outcomes that can um, happen. So the book can be outright approved, conditionally approved if there's any tweaks that need to be made, or rejected. Obviously, a rejected book means that the publisher would have to go back to the drawing board and um, see what, what those recommendations are. If it's conditionally approved, obviously that's great. And um, if there is a full improvement, that's even better. But these copies that you would have received now at the workshop, you will see on the front cover, they say promotional copies. So they are just a few tweaks that still need to be made. But we, we want to obviously make sure that lecturers have the revised syllabi so that they can make those decisions for semester two of 2022. All right, so let us talk about EBM 5. So if we look at the curriculum, there have been very few changes here. The LOs have not changed much. Um, the order of the modules have changed. And please just take note again of the weighting uh, with particular emphasis on module five, module eight, and module nine as being the three most heavily weighted modules. So the general aims to, um, for, for students who are taking EBM5 would be to promote an understanding of the management of a business and to cultivate in them interest in and skill for business management. To give students insight into the managerial environment within which a business focuses and to induce students to the aspects of managing a business and to guide them towards applying these aspects. If we think back to N4, in four was really more about establishing who or what an entrepreneur is and how a business would be um, started, what those startup functions are. In five starts to look more about delving deeper into the managerial functions um, of a business. So the specific aims obviously give students insight into the challenges of managing one's own business, make them familiar with personnel management, to develop an understanding of um, the positive role of business in society and to look at the ethics of business and to develop in students the skills of planning, organizing, staffing and controlling a business or organizational resources or, or part of them effectively, to introduce students to the complexities of operations management and obviously to develop in students the necessary knowledge and skills to prepare them for uh, successful business plan submission. And that could obviously be used for, for financial assistance, um, submitting to a bank or to other partners. So the duration of um, the EBM program, um, with a practical component, it's important that there's at least six hours a week um, for full-time students. Of at least one hour must be for practical. Um, for part-time students, um, a minimum of three hours per week per semester, and we are imagining that if a student is part-time, that they are um, doing some practical work already, they might be working, etc. So the practical work includes one hour prescribed of the six hours and may be treated as a practical hour that can be done under supervision. Um, there are a, a number of practical options that we're going to explain now in the, the rest of this presentation. But practical work experience is critical for students doing EBM. So remember the evaluation is uh, conducted continuously by formative learning in class. And you will see in the textbook that there are a number of activities and a number of case studies. Uh, remember case studies are an important way for students to apply the knowledge that they have learned in terms of the theory that they are exposed to. The 
internal evaluation, the theoretical component. Um, please also note that, that, like I've mentioned, there are a number of uh, little assignments that can be used as formative tests or formative activities. And all of those answers are provided in the lecturer guide. And the formative tasks obviously build up to the summative tasks as well. The internal evaluation for the practical component is very important. In the new textbook or the revised textbook, case studies have been updated to be relevant. So there's so many changes in the way in which business is done nowadays. So all of those have been applied to the case studies. And there is also local entrepreneurs who have tried to give it a real good South African spin and try to find case studies that are relevant for students. Colleges that have entrepreneurial hubs, um, you encourage to, to take students to that center as well and make sure that there is an opportunity for them to engage with other entrepreneurs. It's always a good idea to perhaps invite an entrepreneur into the classroom and have them come and speak to students. It's always good for them to see how entrepreneurial activities are managed in reality. For the semester mark, um, again, very important in planning your ICAS. Um, please make sure that you have um, a clear understanding of this. Um, this is also outlined in the um, ICAS exam instruction, which I mentioned earlier, which is available on the DHET's website. The N4 workbook, which um, comes with the N4 textbook, the business plan um, workbook, can also be used here at N5 level and at N6 level. So please have a look at our catalogue and have a look, if, see if you want to purchase that particular item as well. That will help for the practical component. But we're going to talk a little bit more about practical components in the next few slides. So there is a major emphasis on the practical application and the ability to apply knowledge to real life situations. Case studies are critical for the success of the student and examples are indicated in the syllabus of how to do the practical. So you'll see here on this particular slide that we, the syllabus refers to one of the following, providing that the student did not do this in N4. So if the student went for work shadow, WBE, will, whatever terminology you want to use in their N4, then you need to try and find an alternative practical. And so they give two different options other than the practical experience, which is the flea market workshop and the visits and outings to the business sector. So the flea market option is really an easy one to set up at a college. You can have a market day and students can obviously submit various planning. The uh, visits and outings to the business sector, it, it is a good idea, but sometimes the context of a college, it might not be able to do that. So why not invite guest lecturers into the college, find entrepreneurs and get them to come and engage with and speak to the students. So as I mentioned, there is very little change in the old and the new syllabus. It's just a different flow of the modules and the LOs haven't changed much. However, the major update here is the relevance to how business operate and the different challenges that are faced by businesses. So new business approaches, um, for example, things like digital marketing, green awareness, um, social and business ethics are emphasized. And um, as I've mentioned, all the case studies and examples have been updated to be relevant to the student's um, point of view. All the new syllabus, um, just module nine and five are swapped around. All the learning outcomes do remain the same, but as I've mentioned, the case studies have been updated and refer specifically to pages 16, 28 and 70 of the student book to see um, case studies that are very up to date and relevant and in the context of the students and um, so they're able to obviously identify with that. 
Revision uh, questions and activities have been changed as well to update them. There's new examples that have been added throughout the textbook and obviously updated technology and processes have also been indicated in the textbook to make it um, a 2020 business operation workbook. Microsites have been created with free resources and you would have been exposed to this um, if you were in the workshop. If you aren't in the workshop, if you go to the front of your textbook, students can click on the microsite and that will take them to relevant free resources, tests, posters, PowerPoint presentations, etc., that they can access for free using that microsite. Lecturers, in the lecturer guide, you can click onto that QR code and it will give you a slightly different approach because it is then um, including the lecturer guide. So you students wouldn't have access to the lecturer guide. And all of those resources are available for free um, through the microsite, through the QR code specific in that textbook. But again, you can also access all of those resources on our website at www.futuremanagers.com. Click on the menu in the top right hand corner, click on lecturer support and you'll see a drop down menu with various options that you can obviously access our resources. So let's just quickly look at the modules. Again, the first module, Introduction to Management. Um, again, students must be able to apply this in case studies and there are case studies indicated in the textbook um, updated case studies that they'll be able to use for this particular uh, module. Module two is about personnel management and students must be able to apply these principles to their daily lives. Um, so about self-management and keeping the human element um, in mind. And I think with everything that has happened in the world over the last two years, there's a whole different way in dealing with with the staff, with personnel, you've got work from home, you've got remote um, working, and obviously all of those need to be taken into account. Ethics and social responsibilities in a business, student must be able to apply this to a case study, as well as link it to a social responsibility program. And I think this is something we really need to emphasize with students that are going into their own business or even into um, employment. Um, the ethics and social responsibilities. I think we live in a world where corruption is far too, too accepted and uh, this is an important module to emphasize with students. Module four is the implementing and planning, uh, implementation of planning in your business plan. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the business plan workbook can also be used here. So this is again, practical implementation and this must be emphasized at all times. Module five is around um, revisiting, presenting, and evaluating the business plan. And um, it means completing the documentation as per prescribed items, must be able to adapt their business plan um, to a format that is presentable, obviously present the business plan for a practical mark, and have the business plan evaluated according to the evaluation forms with the emphasis on the managerial component. Remember I said earlier in four, the emphasis was on the establishment of the business. This is now more around the management of the business. So students must be able to apply this knowledge again to case studies. Module six is around organizing in the business. So <clears throat> the concept of organizing needs to be explained and students must obviously explain the importance of forming an organizational structure and describe the content uh, within delegation and identify the pitfalls of delegation, what are the advantages of delegation and the disadvantages of delegation. And again, students must be able to apply this in a practical, a practical activity by creating or drawing an organizational structure for their own business. Model seven speaks to staffing the business. Um, in business today, there seems to be a whole new set of terminology and explaining the concept of staffing. So we talk about human capital, we talk about human resources, we talk about person, talent, experience, capital, 
Um, so there is quite a, 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 a move towards modernization um, around HR and personnel. Um, psychological safety in the workplace, obviously all the issues that have come from COVID. And students must appreciate the fact that staff have important rights that also need to be protected. Module eight is around controlling the business. And remember that modules eight and nine are important modules in terms of the weighting of the particular subject. And for module eight, uh, it's an integral part of management. Obviously budgeting and financial control and break even point are concepts that are dealt with here. And students must be able to apply the control techniques by means of practical assignments. Module eight, again, another important module in terms of the weighting. Remember the weightings that we showed right in the beginning of the presentations. So each module is weighted and that is how the module uh, weighting will also be dealt with in an exam assessment scenario. So students must obviously uh, note the, weighting, the weighted modules that have the heaviest weighting. Uh, module nine, speaking around operational management and obviously the impact of technology. And again, students must be able to apply this knowledge in an analysis of case studies um, of a successful entrepreneur. And this again lends itself well to perhaps having a guest lecturer join you. So special features specifically aligned um, with the new curriculum. There are very clear explanations. Um, there are a number of examples, practical activities that can be used as formative um, little activities and tests during the class time. There's definitions, there's very interesting case studies. The most important thing as well is that you will have noticed that the textbook is in color. Um, and this is the same for the catering theory and prac book. The color does make a big difference, particularly um, for student um, engagement with the content and student ability to connect with the content. So again, your pack would have consisted of a student book, a study guide, a lecturer guide, and um, the microsites that are accessible through the QR codes, which will obviously take you to interactive tests, toys, and previous and updated exam question papers. So this is an opportunity now for any questions and answers. And um, if you are in one of the workshops, uh, one of the facilitators will be able to help you with questions and answers now. If you are just listening to this on our website, please make um, use of our info at futuremanagers.com to be able to query any um, things you have around the textbooks or to ask any particular questions. Thank you so much for your time today. Goodbye. is there if you're prepared to take advantage of it. There are thousands of occupations awaiting the workers who are qualified to fill them. Survival is going to go not to the strongest or the most intelligent, but the most adaptable. There are tests which will help you choose work which fits your level of capacity best. Almost all jobs are becoming technology jobs. We have to be more uh, intentional about how training and education matches to actual tasks and jobs. Many people today are working at things which were their hobbies a few years ago. For the first time, literally, substantial and rapidly growing numbers of people will have choice. We have to be aware of two things that are happening right now in the world of work. The first, we're realizing we're in for a much different kind of future and we're racing to figure out how we can help individuals and businesses get ready. The second, we're starting to become highly aware that the more you push one narrow metric of success, money, growth, profit, at the expense of other life factors, the further we get from actually achieving true sustainable success. So we know the future of work will be different and we can't keep doing things the same old way a new way of work needs to emerge. 89% of the companies that were on the Fortune 500 list in 1955 are no longer on the list today. These are the businesses that had the most resources, the most talent, the greatest technology, the biggest network, 
and we've proven they rise and fall fast. This really is the end of an era. Blockbuster will close all of its remaining stores, about 300 of them, by early January. Well, what went wrong with Kodak? How could it have gone wrong? It's so hard to keep up with change, and change is speeding up. So what's the next few decades gonna look like? Whether you're running a business or just running your life, that question is essential. In the last few decades, there was a shift of mind that started to define business success as one thing, money. This isn't my opinion. We can see evidence of this mindset. And the question is, has this singular focus worked out for people? Has it worked out for businesses? There's good reason to believe it hasn't. It's taken us time to understand our mistake and let it sink in. The old pursuit of work is not what's fully needed for the future. So then what is the answer? What are the real drivers of tomorrow's success, not just in business, but in life? Here's the thing. The new version of work, yes, it will be about technology, but it will also be about being human. Are you able to offer your highest potential? Can you keep learning, keep getting better, stay motivated, stay focused? The best advances in tech and the best capabilities of people coming together, that is the new version of work. Self-awareness, creativity, empathy, trust. These factors will help define your future success. We place a lot of faith in the ability for technology to make things better. My faith is also in people.